So I've finished installing my local, which is going to be my server. And I have also installed Visual Studio Code. I've customized it to look like this because it's easier on my eyes. And if you want to see the different extensions and themes that I've used to make it look like this, there's a video in the description or one that has popped up on your screen right now in the top right corner. And you can visit that to see how to make your editor look like this and have a different number of extensions like I do have here. So let's go back. We are going to create a new site, which I am going to call domains. I'll click continue, or you can actually choose the advanced. After creating this, you'll see that it's going to be called domain.local in my browser. I'll click continue. And here you can customize what version of PHP you want to use. I'm going to go with 8.0. You can use any of these servers. It doesn't really matter. And then for my database, I'll choose 8.0, which is the latest. And I'm doing this to try to make sure that my code is more updated and it will work with different uh, servers. So I'll click continue. And then I'll say this is going to be called domains as a login name. I'll just add a default password and I'll say let's add the site. And now my site is actually ready for use. So I'm going to turn on this one click admin to allow me to always log in without having to add my username and password all the time. And this is going to be on my local site. So I can actually either open the site by clicking that. And this is already ready for use. Or I can actually go and log in into the WP admin. And you're going to see that I'm already logged in. I don't need to add the password or username. And this is ready for me, so I don't have to fidget with different things to just set up WordPress for use. So this is how we set up for development or how I ideally set up for WordPress development. And then I can go check the plugins. We have nothing installed in here and we're going to start creating our own plugin. What I'll do is open up my editor and I'll open up my server. I'm going to click to go to site folder. And what I'll do is just drag and drop these domains in here because it's my domain folder. I'll go inside up and you're going to see all the files that are related to WordPress. Now inside the WP content is where we have our plugins folder and inside our themes, that's where we have the different themes. Now people ask me, the code that you've created, can I run it outside of a plugin? Yes, you can do that. You can actually use your themes functions.php. For example, my current active theme is the 2023 theme. So I can actually go in here and create a functions.php file. And this is a place I can run all my PHP code. But the problem is that I might want to change a theme. And when I do that, I lose functionality of the code that is inside here. So in preference, I always check out and say, is this code that I'm going to write, is it going to make my site just look better? Then that goes into the theme. But if it is something that's going to create a new functionality altogether, I would rather create a plugin for it. It doesn't matter whether you have a thousand plugins on your site, your site will run well. The problem is if your plugins are poorly written, then those can slow down your site. But the other advantage that you do have is that if you write a plugin, you can be able to just right click it to deactivate it or activate it, and then you will have the functionality. So since we are going to create a domain searcher, I'm going to create a new plugin called domain dash searcher. And inside here, I'm going to create a new file called domain dash searcher.php. And this is going to be the file that we are going to use to create our plugin. Now, if I go back to plugins here and reload, you're going to see that there's nothing showing that we have a new plugin. But WordPress requires us to just write this PHP line. And then we are going to have comments in here, different comments that will actually highlight that this is a plugin. For example, we can have plugin name and we're going to call this domain searcher. I just need to spell this right. I'll save this. When I go back to my code and reload, 
you're going to see that now we have this thing called domain searcher in here and we can actually activate it. And when we activate it, nothing is going to happen really because we've not written any particular code for it, but we are able to have this plugin in here. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to use a small snippet in my editor, which gives me all the different options that are available for me to write the comments with the different names. So we say the plugin name will be domain searcher, and then we're going to give it a plugin URI. I'm going to just say this is going to be working on my blog, and you can change this to any domain that you want. And then in here, I'm going to say this is Techie Press. This plugin enables the search, renewal, and registration of UG domains. So once I do that, I'm going to save this, come back here, let's reload. You'll see that we have our description here, we have our version number, and you'll see this version is right here. And of course we add the license, I would rather choose to have it as GPL because everything that is in WordPress automatically adopts the GPL license. So I'll keep that in there. And what I'm going to do here is say this is going to be domain dash searcher. And I'm just going to prefix this with my name so that we don't have any clashes, let's say in the future with uh, someone writing a plugin that is similar and we're having issues writing this. So I'm going to prefix it with TechiePress and that will be my text domain. And we are ready to actually move ahead and start writing our plugin. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do or the final thing that I will do in this particular video is I'm going to add a line of code that allows me to keep my plugin secure from people who might try to access this particular file on the server without permissions. I'm going to use a PHP function which is called defined and this is going to check if this particular constant abs path which is in WordPress, it's going to check is abs path defined and if it is true then it will continue. But if it is not true then I'm going to tell it please die add the message and say unauthorized access and I'll put an apostrophe and just save that. So with this I've added a little bit of security to my plugin. So as I close off this particular segment of the video I just want to let you know in advance that the code we're going to be writing is going to be in functional programming whereby we're just using functions and calling them all over the place but we can eventually move this into what we call object-oriented programming, whereby we classify different functions and say this should exist in a class, and then we can call them and enjoy the different benefits that come with object-oriented programming. Don't worry about those two things because they sound like they are mammoths of concepts, but we're going to break them down and then with your practice you'll actually find them easier and you will add them inside your own code. Now we shall also look at things like coding standards and using the WordPress recommended coding standards and you're going to see that I don't write my functions in here and leave without the space. I actually go ahead and add space in here and for me it's easier on my eye because that's the way I've always written my code but it's just a preference. Some people don't like to have those spaces, so they will overwrite the coding standards. But those are some of the things that allow you to share code with other people and they'll easily contribute and engage with your code because it's easier to look at and easier to read. So otherwise, enjoy whatever you're coding.